This Christmas winter storm that's forming is going to be a nuisance for parts of the central and eastern United States, especially with heavier snow totals possible than is initially expected over the north central, with flooding rains for many others heading eastward. I've got the details on a potential feet of snow, flooding rainfall, as well as a distant weather shift, all of that in this video. All right, we're starting off with the NAM computer model and what it is showing over parts of the Midwest and Great Lakes through the night tonight on your Friday night going into your Saturday is some scattered showers over parts of Illinois, Indiana, as well as Michigan, but those are going to push out. We've got two new systems that are going to kind of combine, one of them bringing snow to parts of Idaho and Montana, the other one bringing some rain as well as some flooding um, concerns there in the parts of Arizona especially. But again, this is just in the near term into our Friday night time. Now, as we make our way into our Saturday, this is um, December 23rd. We're going to see western Texas as well as the panhandle of Oklahoma fill in with some rainfall, some snowfall into parts of western Colorado as well as parts of central and eastern Montana as well as north central parts of Wyoming. So really beginning to fill in with these two new systems. By the time we make our way into our Sunday morning into the very early time frame, say around 1, 2 a.m. Central Time, look at how this becomes dynamic with a low pressure system really forming over parts of western Kansas, bringing up snowfall here into parts of the Rockies as well as the northern plains, um, a band of some showers and storms as well on the southern and eastern end. And look at how we kind of see that dividing line push through parts of Nebraska as well as parts of the Dakotas. We're going to see that low really stationed here over Kansas by this point into the afternoon hours on your Christmas Eve with heavy rainfall and flooding concerns over parts of the Arklatex region all the way on down to the Gulf Coast. Now what's really helping to you know influence this storm is how warm it's going to be out ahead of it. We've got temperatures well above average by as much as 30 to 40 degrees over parts of the Great Lakes region, and it's going to be pushed on by a little bit of some cooler air coming out of the Rockies. By the way, warmer than average here in the Great Lakes is only in the 40s and 50s, but nonetheless, you can get the point. Warmer than average air with southerly flow out ahead of the system, cooler than average air pushing on in from the west behind it. Now, stage one breakdown. We've kind of already run through it, but of course, I want to look at it with my trusty old European model, which never lets me down, right? Well, not all the time. But anyway, we've got flooding potential here, exiting parts of California, Nevada, as well as Utah and Arizona. It's going to begin to transpire over the south central zone that I just circled as we make our way towards our Christmas Eve. You can see how this low just becomes quickly dynamic here during that time frame. Briefly, some showers and storms in West Texas on your Saturday night going into our Sunday. Those could produce some gusty winds and some small to medium-sized hail up to the size of quarters. Notice this northern stripe, though. That's where we're going to begin to see some snowfall. The southern end, that's where we're going to see some of the heavy rainfall transpire throughout that Christmas Eve time frame. This is 2 p.m. on your Christmas Eve. Look at how the rain is just pouring on down over parts of the Arklatex region, some embedded thunderstorms as well, but overall mostly sub-severe, maybe a marginal severe risk getting issued for some gusty winds. I just don't really see a tornado threat. That northern end, we continue to see that snowfall, but then once we get beyond that point, we kind of see the snowfall begin to taper on off over parts of um, the, the Dakotas and Minnesota by the time we make our way into our Sunday night and into our Monday, and that kind of opens the door for the next part of this system that I'll break down in a minute, but your snowfall through Christmas morning looks like this. You can see by the time we make our way, through the Christmas Eve morning, we've got heavy snowfall through parts of the mountains of the Rockies and the Four Corners region. And then look at how we see more snowfall fill in over the northern plains, particularly the panhandle of Nebraska, parts of central South Dakota, eastern um, North Dakota, and into parts of Minnesota. That region I just circled there in Minnesota, I think that little stripe of snow is a little questionable with the NAM. But this area I circled, I do think that is going to play out. And we will see some two to four inch totals um, with a little bit less actually sticking on the ground here. Um, really making its way through that region. Now, as you take a look at the rainfall potential here, again, I don't really want to not talk about either in southern Arizona and western New Mexico. Look at these totals. Some spots picking up anywhere from one to three inches of rain in that area, and then from parts of the south central plains all the way on up into Iowa, we get some totals anywhere from around one to three inches there. Some of those red colors in the parts of eastern Arizona and western um, Arkansas indicating the potential for around four inches of rain. So I would really monitor the potential for some flooding, especially in that zone I just circled on the southern end where we see those repeated showers and thunderstorms. Now my latest white Christmas forecast looks like this. Best bet with elevation. That hasn't changed here over parts of the mountains of the west. Possible there in that orange zone in the parts of Montana as well as the western Dakotas. Where that snow stripe sets up by the time we make our way to our Christmas morning over the um, Dakotas. That's really where the best bet's going to be. Moving on now to stage two, you can see here this system really beginning to get a new area of low pressure that's actually going to help it out by the time we make our way into our Christmas morning. So just when this first piece of energy here attached to a cold front over parts of the north central and into parts of southern Canada, you can see the remnants of that with that light snowfall in South Dakota Monday morning. Look at how that stretches all the way on up on your Christmas morning through parts of southern and eastern Canada. 
We're going to have to have that second part of this low pressure system help it out here and move on in from the south. Look at how that snowfall progresses into parts of eastern South Dakota as well as northern parts of Nebraska. Even some ice into parts of northern Minnesota if this scenario plays out Monday night going into Tuesday. Also an area of some showers and storms here over the mid-Atlantic or as well as the Ohio Valley and southeast. So kind of a messy system. But look at how heavy that snow is and how it lasts overnight Monday night and into our Tuesday morning. It will accumulate quite heavily here especially the longer this lasts because this is a cutoff low it's a little bit unpredictable it's off the jet stream so that's why it's really important to just kind of monitor how this swirls but it looks like by the time we go to the end of the day tuesday rainfall begins pushing eastward into parts of the northeast and the only lingering snowfall is over parts of minnesota then the system just really falls apart over southern canada um, and the up of michigan maybe some lingering flurries in this area i just circled there and the east coast as well getting in on maybe some scattered showers during that point and that's late on Wednesday, so the system really taking a little while to, to kind of finish clearing on out from the United States. Um, but notice how that really begins to happen as we go Thursday night and into our Friday, looking like we'll just have some lingering lake effect snowfall there coming out of the north in the Great Lakes region. Now taking a look at that snowfall more uh, a little bit closer here in the parts of the Dakotas as well as Minnesota, look at how by the time we go, again, this is in the middle of the night, Monday night, so Christmas night going into our Tuesday, the 26th in the morning. We had this narrow dividing line with some ice and sleet along it some snowfall into parts of the Dakotas as well as northern Nebraska. Now remember, this is just the Euro model. This is one solution. Overall, the GFS beginning to come into more agreement, but I'll show you the differences in a second. Look at how that snowfall is going to be just wrapping around with strong fashion even as you wake up on your Tuesday. Maybe some blizzard conditions if we can get enough wind in this storm. I just don't see that really happening, but we'll keep an eye on that. Breaking up the snowfall as we make our way overnight Tuesday night and into our... Um, on Wednesday morning, but nonetheless, we'll still have some lingering pieces here, even beyond Tuesday afternoon, which is what I was just showing you there. Your northern snowfall, this is the European model. Again, note we already get a couple two to four inch totals here from that original stripe that I showed you earlier in the video, but look at how totals go anywhere from a foot to 20 inches in a few locations in the parts of South Dakota. Again, this could shift exactly where this is, but if this sets up like this, which it's looking like it will, with that cutoff low lingering around for at least 24 hours, that could really help to boost the snowfall over parts of South Dakota as well as northeastern Nebraska out of this system. Um, and then as we take a look at the GFS model, again showing very heavy totals in a similar region, now broken up a little bit more, but overall you get the point. Certainly totals upwards of 8 inches of snow possible in a widespread fashion where the system really dumps the most of that northern flow. But again, that could be further east if the low pressure sifts off in that direction. That's why we have to want monitor the s stage two part of the system a lot closer because it is not completely set in stone. By the way, all these totals that I've been showing you are through the end of our Tuesday and into our Wednesday, including this ice accretion. Look at these totals. Anywhere from quarter of an inch to a half an inch of ice in parts of the eastern Dakotas as well as northern Minnesota. Not completely out of the question here if we can get that system to wrap around in the way that it's looking like it will right now. Again, the European model kind of circling that zone for the best ice potential. The GFS, though, also including Iowa in the mix as well as southern Minnesota in the Twin Cities region for some of that really heavy ice accretion. So we'll have to see because that could cause some really big issues, especially for those trying to travel right after the Christmas holiday. Speaking of what could cause travel issues, the chance for a foot of snowfall it's medium as I have it right now over parts of central and eastern South Dakota and northern Nebraska. Other areas just looking at a pretty low end threat um, for a foot of snowfall if you live in Nebraska, the Dakotas, and western Minnesota. Now all your rainfall out of the systems combined here, the stage 2 and the stage 1 parts of this, again uh, really accumulating an, an inch to three inches over parts of the central United States. And then in the eastern part, looking like anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a half, though locally higher amounts will be possible in the southeast as well as the mid-Atlantic. Looking like this system will be less dynamic in the northeast, so lower totals for now, but again, things can change as we get closer. Now let's take a look at temperature anomalies and kind of track a pattern change that I sense coming after this. You can see warmer than average air making its way through the Great Lakes region out ahead of this system with that southerly flow. Again, a small area of some cooler than average air moving through the Rockies. This is very much resembling what I showed you earlier in that temperature anomaly graphic. By the time we make our way towards our Friday, December 29th, about to ring in the new year, temperatures anywhere from around 5 to 10 degrees below average over the 
southern United States, whereas the northern and western as well as the northeast United States stay warmer than average. But look at how that cool air just intensifies as we make our way into early January of 2024. Hard to believe that's just, you know, a week and a half away. Those temperatures look like they'll be quite cool in this region for an extended period of time. And if we can get the dry air left behind this low pressure system to kind of fade away and we can get some low pressures to tr track along that El Nino subtropical jet that gets activated, we could see some snowfall in that area I just circled in particular here. But again, this is just an early look, but it does look like the start of January has the big potential to be active because look, those average to below average temperatures linger over a good chunk of the southern as well as western United States all the way through January 6th, um, at least with these ensemble models, which is a blend of a bunch of models coming together and bringing together one scenario. By the way, those, those numbers that are separated by the dash on your screen, those are the low and high ends of what the ensembles are showing, so don't really focus on that, focus on the colors. Now, your Climate Prediction Center precipitation outlook as we go towards the New Year time frame, look at how parts of the southwest begin to light back up with that precipitation. If that can go further east, that could bring some snowstorms that way, so that's why I wanted to point that out to you otherwise they're looking pretty dry during that time frame so if you're a snow lover um, don't get your hopes up too soon but hey it does look better as we head towards january please hit subscribe for accurate easy to understand and passionate forecasts and have a great day one nation weather.